when the golem arrived, he told us not to celebrate, for this was not the dawn of a golden age of peace. He promised us toil and hardship. He said we needed to be prepared for the wicked creatures that lurked in the void. The things he promised came to pass. Just as the golem came to us, so did a champion of evil fall among the Phrygians. Before, the Phrygians were like any people. Sometimes there was war, but more often there was peace and trade. Now they came only as raiders and slavers, bearing the marks of their new dark mistress. So the work began. Each village and town along the coast had a fort. Unless the dark champion himself appeared, the people could retreat to the fortification and hold out, at least for a little while. Each fortress was also constructed with beacons that could be lit in order to alert the surrounding areas of an attack. Once the beacons were lit, the warriors of the tribes would muster and prepare to repel the invaders. Once this system was in place, it seemed to be an effective deterrent to our enemies but we lost many to the earlier raids, to death or enslavement. What those monsters were doing with our people in captivity, I try not to think upon. The only way to truly stop the raids was to destroy the dark champion of Phrygia. We lacked a proper navy. We only had a few fishermen. So... They began training with the militia to help them learn the basics of working on the water, and once the fortifications were completed, we began construction on the ships needed to cross the sea to Phrygia. The golem himself was busy with his own work, trying to develop some new weapon he believed would drive back the pirates that plagued our shores. Whatever unholy power drove these raiders... They seemed to be stronger and swifter than our warriors. But our weapons, armor, and discipline were superior. Though we lost much of this advantage when they attacked caravans shipping these goods to different villages. In addition, Captain Faniel was forced to spend more time making adjustments and repairs to his augmetics, he called them. He was running out of parts. Soon, he would have to make do with whatever components he could make from scratch. As for myself, I was tasked with preaching the word of the golem, urging the people to put their faith in him, and keeping their faith strong in the face of all the toil that needed to happen, staving off hopelessness and comforting those who had lost loved ones in the raids. It was always difficult to speak on the power, beneficence, and greatness of the emperor to those who were suffering at the hands of his enemies. I also spent my time reaching beyond the lands of the Ashkenazi to the nomads in the desert, the Tarabin. I knew them to be fierce and haughty warriors beyond the mountains. We sought their aid, and our blacksmiths provided them with keen weapons so they might defeat the neighbor tribes. Al-Rashid, the man who led them, was a strong leader and a veteran of many campaigns. If he was able to unite the desert tribes, well... They might be willing to lend a stronger force in recompense for our support. Or, Al-Rashid's ambitions might extend beyond the mountains into the lands of the Ashkenazi. It was a risk I was willing to take. And so, events have now been set in motion. Our plans are set. Now, there is only work until we can make our attack on Phrygia and bring this reign of evil to an end. The sun had set as evening fell across the land. All through the town, lamps were being lit as families shared meals after a long day of work. Abaya, now bearing his priestly staff of office, made his way to Captain Fanuel's workshop, which had gotten progressively more elaborate. It even glowed with lights that the golem said ran on Electricity. Vanuel had once explained how he was able to use the coal-fed forge to power the different machines in his shop. 
but the priest couldn't make much sense of the explanation. Abaya saw that the door was open, and he stepped inside. The golem was working on something that appeared slightly familiar to Abaya. There were numerous springs and pins and small components that lay spread about the workbench next to a long metal tube. The space marine looked up at the priest. How did your envoy to Al Rashid go? Well enough. He seemed happy to receive the weapons. And according to him, the wars against his rivals are going well. What device are you constructing now? Abaya looked at the laid out parts. This reminds me of when you disassembled your holy bolter for maintenance. Are you constructing something similar? Yes. I am constructing a few simple firearms. Just like my bolter, they will fire a projectile much faster than any arrow. No armor constructed on this planet will be able to stop it. However, its similarity to my bolter stops there. It is like comparing a wooden sword to a steel one. And how are you holding up? You mentioned that you had run out of components a few days before I left. Yes. I have been able to make do with available resources. But even my workshop, which is far more advanced than anything on this planet, it cannot replicate the work of a forge world. I have had to improvise, and my efficacy has suffered. My armor can no longer run at full capacity without risking failure to certain components. Then we have to move quickly against the enemy. Yes. Once winter is over, the fleet should be ready, and we will invade Phrygia and end the blasphemy that has taken root in that land. As the Emperor wills it. As the Emperor wills it. Tell me your opinion on something, as a tactician, as a general. Do you think we can do this? Do you think we can conquer Phrygia and cast down the evil one? On our own? No. We have superior weapons and armor, but our men have little experience in conquest, and most have never been on a boat in their lives. Our enemies will be seething with hellish energies and profane boons from their Dark Master. I will have to face their champion as I am, not at full capacity, and I will be at a disadvantage. But we will not be truly alone, regardless of other allies that may render assistance. The Emperor will march with us as long as our faith in him is strong. Let us hope that the zeal you have instilled in the people burns hot enough to weather the storm of this enemy. Let us hope indeed. For the sake of this planet, let us purge this infection, that we may walk in his holy light. Priest. Abaya. I wanted to give you something. We still have some time and I want to train you with this before we sail against Phrygia. The golem produced a long wooden box and placed it before Abaya. Open it. The priest unclasped the box and opened it to reveal a long-barreled bolt-action rifle. With it, there were things that looked like small bolt rounds, shining like brass or, or, or polished copper. Is this what you're working on? Will our men be armed with these? No. The primer is too difficult to mass produce. The other weapons will be simple black powder. They're easy enough for the blacksmiths to learn to make them, and we should be able to arm many of our soldiers. This weapon was made by my hand. It is deadly accurate. And you can fire much faster with it than you can with the black powder firearms. Take it, priest. So you may be a mighty example to your people on the battlefield. Abaya took the weapon gratefully. By the Emperor's will, I shall crush those who would destroy his people and spread evil throughout the land. Thanuel nodded.
by the Emperor's will. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Heart of Iron. If you like what you heard, please leave a like and comment so that the seeds of heresy do not take root and grow on your planet. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about Jews in space. If you would like to support me, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. Those links are below. And if you have no idea what's going on, you can click on the Heart of Iron playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now, and listen to the story from the beginning. Once again, thank you very much for listening. No Man Out.